The average Egyptian was not inspired by the Iranian revolution to move in that direction. In 1990 and 91, America became directly involved in the Middle East conflict, leading an international coalition against Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein's invasion of Kuwait in the Gulf War. Hussein's aggressive campaigns, however, had no connection with Islam. Saddam Hussein is far from an Islamic figure. He is a military dictator, he's a tyrant, he tortures, he, his citizens disappear. Uh, he's gassed uh, and killed uh, the Kurds up in the north. He's killed and bombarded the Shias in the south. Uh, but remember that he has a certain symbolic significance for the Arab world. Because people are giving a choice to themselves. Do we support a Muslim ruler, however bad? Or do we support America, which is attacking a Muslim ruler? In more than 50 years of Arab-Israeli conflict, the world has witnessed a multitude of atrocities committed in the name of Islam. Assassinations, hijackings, and more recently, suicide bombings. Now, of course, um, suicide in Islam is categorically forbidden to a Muslim. Uh, in theory, God gives life, only God can take life. Today, radical factions of Islam have honed in on the United States as a target of terrorism, culminating in the attacks of September 11, 2001. September 11 made Americans aware of the viciousness of the radical, violent fringe in Islam. But it also, paradoxically, made more Americans aware of the fact that there are Muslims who are their neighbors who care in the same way that they do. Muslims of the world are at a crossroads. How will they define their faith in the modern world? For all Muslims, it is said every new day is a challenge to live an exemplary life. For at the end of time, everyone must answer to God on the Day of Judgment. In fact, all Islamic teachings can be reduced to God, revelation, and judgment. And the idea of judgment is the motor vehicle which drives the uh, Muslim life along because the purpose of life is not just this life of the world but is to uh, attain peace in the afterlife. For those who do not walk the straight path to God, the depths of perdition have many layers. Hellfire is the place of punishment for the people who commit evil here and who do not repent and um, there are various uh, degrees, and that is not dissimilar, really, from medieval Christian teaching on this point. For those who submit to the will of God and seek repentance for their sins, a great reward awaits. Paradise would be a place where there would be no suffering, and that there's the reward of those who do good in the test of this life. But when Judgment Day arrives, Muslims believe they will not look on the face of God because God has no form that humans can possibly comprehend. Allah is he who raised the heavens without any pillars, and it is he who spread out the earth and set thereon mountains standing firm and flowing rivers and fruit of every kind. Behold verily in these things, there are signs for those who understand. But until the Day of Judgment, Muslims must live in the physical world with all its troubles, influences, and challenges. That, some Muslims feel, is becoming increasingly difficult. And some are responding with violence. Here we have a hijacker committing suicide, violating the Quran, taking the lives of people, violating the Quran, twice over. And we have to ask ourselves, what is going on in the Muslim world. And what is going on in the Muslim world is 
a lot of confusion, a lot of anger, a sense of injustice. So you have a paradoxical situation emerging in the minds of these uh, young men that they can violate the Quran itself by committing suicide and killing innocent people because the situation demands it. So we are seeing a desperate time in the Muslim world. Hijackers, hostage takers, suicide bombers. These are the images many associate with Islam. But do these extremists represent the religion's true message? Even though people know that there are a lot of things that Christians have done, uh, they tend to talk about the teachings of Jesus as though that somehow represents Christianity, uh, not what Christians have actually done. And then they look at Islam and don't know what the Quran says or what Muhammad taught uh, through his sayings and actions, but see the behavior of extremists and think that represents Islam. It is understandable to fear those terrorists who claim to act in the name of Islam. However, nerve gas attacks in the Tokyo subway, IRA bombings in Britain, the carnage in Oklahoma City, these and other recent events show us that Islam holds no monopoly on terror. After the Oklahoma City bombing, we did get a letter in the mail uh, with a clipping about the bombing. And somebody had put a post-it note on it saying, look what your people have done. In the end, it turned out that a white American man was responsible, Tim McVeigh. So I guess they were right. It was one of my people who did it because I'm American too. Islam is a dynamic religion that thrives in some of the most modern places on earth and struggles in many of the most troubled. I feel that the saddest thing that has happened to Islam in the contemporary age is the Arab-Israeli conflict. Why? Because it has become, among so many people, impossible to attempt to talk about Islam, think about Islam, uh, engage Islam without immediately thinking about this one bloody conflict that won't go away. There's going to be a peace sooner or later, either by exhaustion or by attrition or by imposition. There'll be a peace. Now, there is the, the religious communities have to prepare the heart right now so that the wounds can be healed, so that people can talk together. Though the Islamic world has freed itself from colonial rulers, thus far, few stable and fair governments have emerged to replace them. Islamic societies, once cultural, scientific, and political world pioneers, are suffering crises of leadership, both political and intellectual. We are seeing a time when Muslim scholars, Muslim leaders, really need to be able to understand the Quran, their own tradition, and then relate it to the world and to the wider world events that are taking place within the context of trying to understand and uh, be able to live with other cultures. Because if that doesn't happen, the 21st century will be a very turbulent and a very difficult century for everyone concerned. These different Muslim groups, the African-Americans, the Pakistanis, the Egyptians, the Palestinians in America, all of us should be seeking opportunity to come together and um, have discussion of what Islam is for us in any part of the world and what Islam is for us in this democracy. Iraq is my birthplace. The government of Iraq took half of my family hostages and killed many of them. America gave me freedom and dignity. This is the land where I can worship God freely without fear, without intimidation, without the harassment of the secret uh, intelligence. And I love this country. And I am thankful to God who brought me here to this country and made me feel again that I'm a human this is a time when uh, religion has to show its real, real soul. If we don't, I think it will be a confirmation that religion is passé, more than that, that it's a negation of all of the healthy dreams that all of us have for the future.
The biblical imperatives are pretty clear. The two greatest commandments are to love God and to love your neighbor as yourself. And so the question becomes immediately, well, who is my neighbor? Well, surely Jesus wasn't saying only people who look like you and think like you and who worship exactly like you, but it, it's, it's clearly a reference to other human beings. It is in everybody's interest that our worlds do not collide, but rather reinforce each other because we all are hoping for the same thing. We all, be all believe basically in the same things. And when we think we don't, it's only because we have looked at each other as stereotypes, not as human beings. To many in the West, Islam remains a paradox, a religion that professes peace yet is used to justify violence, a culture that promotes science and technology yet seems to resist modernization. Like Judaism, Christianity, and all the world's great faiths, Islam has many dimensions and has been interpreted in many different ways. And like other religions, it can turn violent, especially when defending its beliefs against what it sees as evildoers. Some are hopeful that Muslims, Christians, and Jews will be able to reestablish a peaceful coexistence. But others aren't so sure. As violence continues, suicide bombers get younger, and death tolls go on rising. Many Muslims themselves...